Go ahead, Mr. Mayor. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Village of Roosevelt. So we're up September 1st, Labor Day, the beginning of the big weekend that we all did. So all the local preppers will be hitting the grocery stores the next couple of days and hunting down. So anyway, we welcome you to it. Uh, we had a little technical difficulty this morning, but we have overcome. So we'll get started. Uh, if you'll join me. We're standing for a moment of silence and then we'll uh, salute the flag and say the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. To the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I salute the flag stated in Mexico as the symbol of the perfect nation of the United Nations. All right, get some W40 for these doors, and we'll be in business. Okay, we want to get started. We kind of we have a long agenda and a lot of discussion items and whatnot, so we want to roll on. And roll call, please, Mrs. Devine. Yes, sir. Mayor Crawford. Here. Councilor Jackson. Here. Councilor Coughlin. Here. Councilor Cornelius. Here. Councilor Salas. Here. Yes. Councilor Letterman. Here. Councilor Edie. Here. All right. Very good. We'll go through the agenda items. And this again, it's a workshop, so we're uh, regular or consent, and we'll set up any discussion needed. Uh, item number one is discussion on adoption of resolution 2020-34, a resolution establishing policy for the agendas and procedures for regular meetings, special meetings, emergency meetings, and workshop meetings of the governor, governing body of the village of Roosevelt. Uh, Mr. Dodge, do you want to elaborate? Uh, yes, Mayor. It's not actually not a comment on the, on the, uh, the discussion as well. Hello, we can hear you. Come on. Can you guys mute inside that office room? Yvonne, could you mute, have them mute that inside the office, please? Okay, I guess they got it. Mr. Um, Mayor, on this one, we're, we're making some slight modifications to the um, to the resolution to allow executive session uh, during workshop meetings. Uh, for instance, on this meeting here, a rule's been to allow us to go into an executive session. Um, so we have to have a, a special meeting time at 9 o'clock so that we can go into executive session and discuss some action items that we may be um, uh, talking about for the next uh, council meeting. That our um, executive session allows under executive session. In addition to that, Mayor, you know, one of the, the things that I want to bring up at this time is the governor's health order last week actually um, allowed mass gatherings to go to uh, 10. So, you know, Irma and I have had some discussions, and what we'd like to consider is uh, going back to 10, continuing to practice COVID safe practices, but bringing the counselors that would like to come back in. Um, to come back in and if they still want to meet in conference rooms, uh, that's up to, to them or uh, uh, call in, that's up to them as well. But we'd like to offer that opportunity as long as we're staying six feet apart and um, you know, practicing COVID safe practices. I think that's good, and I think uh, Councilor Lutterman was urging for that too. I think that I agree with that, so I think that's uh, something that each council can decide if they want to do. And then we would have our just a couple of people in here if we needed to. Okay, so as as Roman works on the seating chart for uh, the next meeting next week, um, she'll be contacting each counselor to see if they want to attend, if they want to attend a conference room, if they want to attend a home, or, or, or not calling. So we'll, we'll be providing that option. Uh, Irma, I believe that there was also a couple of other changes, minor changes in this resolution. Can you cover that, please? I think there was only, thank you. Uh, Tim, uh, Mayor Crawford, uh, members of the Army Body, there was um, one other minor 
uh, change the boards. At one point, we had discussed about having the boards and commissions, and we have been for the last couple of weeks, have, uh, have it moved up to the agenda. And we thought that we place that as a, a sort of permanent um, place of the order of business so that if there are any appointments, you know, we give them that hard courtesy and not having to wait until the end of the meeting for their appointments. Okay, is there any uh, <clears throat> discussion on this one? No, can everybody? Yes, sir. Um, yeah, I agree with, with the meeting and stuff there, but I still endorse that we meet at the convention center, meeting rooms four and five. Um, I don't see it no difference in a restaurant or anything there as long as we're all keeping that socially distant. Um, at 25% capacity to those rooms. Um, but, I mean, I'll go along with this, which is much needed, and thank you, Susan, for, for pursuing this, because, um, like, as we have continue to have technical difficulties and stuff, that's just my thoughts on it. Okay, we can certainly, I know we had talked to uh, the commissioner, Jeff, and him, and we'll put that under consideration in that. I don't know why we couldn't do that. We'll check the logistics out on that and, and um, make a decision on it. Mayor, Mayor um, you know, I actually like that idea. Now that we're getting ready to go into construction on this building here, uh, we may need to make some accommodations for employees and utilize this room. So that may be a, a good opportunity to actually, you know, exercise that option, um, you know, for the next, you know, six months or so. And so if we did that with the capacity, then could other people come into the meeting? Uh, mask gatherings are still uh, kept at, at 10%. Okay. Uh, we can ask the, um, the AG for the book. guidance on that. Yeah. What's the difference of, of a church going up to 40% and restaurants going up to um, 24%? 25%. And that's what confuses me. As long as we're keeping distance, wearing masks, I, I can see us all meeting as a full board in person and and even scheduling in public input if they need it to. Mayor, Mayor, like a public hearing. Mayor Council, we can ask for clarification and see if that's allowed. You know, right, right now the guidance that they've given us has asked us to keep it, you know, first it was 5% or 5 people. Now they're saying 10, so we can ask for guidance to see if that's allowable. But that's the way it's been since for five months. Is, it doesn't make sense. So I'm with you. Your wife? I'm tired of it. How tired are you, counselor? I, I just, I'm taking a poll because we're starting to club. I'm tired. <laughs> we're a, a movement or something. I don't know. Okay, we will look at the, M plus, okay. <laughs> could, could everybody hear Tim okay and Nerma? Yes, uh, we have all the uh, IT stuff that we need here that can be easily moved, and we have good internet over there. I think it's better over there than it is here. Um, so, uh, pardon? Recording devices as well. Yeah, recording. I'm not sure what's available for recording purposes at the convention center. We can explore that. We'll have to explore it, but we'll make sure that we adhere to all uh, AG and ordinances and all that stuff. Uh, make sure that we're legal. Otherwise, you know, I'm Okay. All right. So, uh, we want this one. Anybody have any uh, position on it? Consent? Or do we need to have it since it's a resolution as a, a discussion item on a um, regular item? Yeah, probably regular item. Okay, anyone else? Nope. Okay, regular item it is item number two discussion on, possible, uh, discussion on adoption of resolution. 2020-35, a resolution declaring the intent of the village of Rural Oso, New Mexico, to consider for adoption in ordinance authorizing the issuance and sale of village of Rural Oso, New Mexico, 
General Obligation Bonds Series 2020, the bonds to enlarge, improve, and or extend the village's water uh, system, providing that the bonds will be payable from ephemeral taxes levied on all taxable property without the limit as to the rate or amount engaging Hilltop Securities Inc. as municipal advisor and Modrol Sperling Law Firm as board, excuse me, as bond counsel for the village to assist the village uh, with the issuance and sale of the bonds. So go ahead. Yeah, this one, uh, there's a uh, Judy's going to present on this one. Mayor and Council, uh, this is um, the first uh, resolution notifying the public that we are getting ready to issue our GEO bonds. Um, we use to 1.5 million per year. Um, they will probably be issued in. You froze, Judy, Judy. Around December. Uh, so this is another 1.5 um, million, or another 1.5 next year. Okay, what we understood you to say is 1.5 million. Up to 1.5 million in this issue. In this issue, okay. And it's already been voted on, lest we forget. Mayor, on, on, yes. this, one, on this one as well, um, not just on this one, but you know, we continue to look for other leveraging opportunities. So, Eric, if you don't mind chiming in and talk a little bit about our discussion with uh, Bureau of Reclamations and, and some of our um, ideas on how we're looking at not just utilizing local money, but leveraging other dollars as well, just like we're doing with CDBG. So, sure. you want to touch on that, Eric? Uh, Mayor Crawford and Councilors, I'm Eric Boyd, the Water Resource Director. Um, right now, we are working. Um, as you guys remember, we have two uh, water line projects that are designed and shovel ready the Paradise Canyon lateral um, service laterals and then the Pine Cliff subdivision. And so, right now, they're currently advertising the Bureau of Reclamation uh, Water Smart grants, which are geared toward water conservation and hydroelectric power. And so, what we're doing is um, we're slightly modifying these projects so. Um, there's a couple of uh, pressure reducing valves in those projects. We're going to add in a, a hydro turbine that will power, it will, we'll just produce a small amount of power that will operate the SCADA system that will monitor pressures. So rather than having to have a solar panel or running dedicated electric, we'll be able to run off of the flow of water going through those areas. Uh, and then we're also doing some uh, district meter areas in those projects. Um, adding that to that co component so that we can track to see if there's any leakage. So we're looking at the um, all the new demand side meters that we put in. We can track the water sales in the area versus the water that we're putting into an area. If there's major discrepancies, then we can identify that there's leaks in our side. So um, that uh, funding opportunity is actually increased in the amount of available funds uh, so those two projects together are estimated construction value at, at um, $3.4 million. And this granting opportunity could uh, give us an opportunity to get about $1.7 million. So we're, we're hopeful that we'll be able to, to get this granting opportunity because of all the extended or additional funds that they put into the program for this year. That's an additional 1.7 you were talking about? So we're, we can apply for up to $2 million for a project. So, um, and there's a 50-50 match component. So we could get, uh, we could get $1.7 million out of the 3.4 uh, paid for out of this grant opportunity if we're awarded it. And then we'd have to put in 1.7 or whatever. And it's already a plan that we have 1.7. So it's uh, money that we're Taking these bonds that uh, the community is supported, and we can double it for them. Yes. Is that money already designed for a project? I mean, on our uh, <clears throat> whether it's our capital outlay or our plans or whatever that we already got that this next uh, um, bond already planned for, and it's, would this change that plan? So right now, um, currently working on finishing the. 
Chip Club and, and the plant upgrade. So once we finish those two projects, um, the money on fire issues will be spent and a little bit of this money will be used. Um, but after those two projects, um, we need to get um, all the new, uh, we have the Paradise Canyon already identified and then the CDBG we have identified. And one more, I believe. Thanks for the fine clip. No. So the answer to that is no, it wouldn't interrupt any of those plans. That's correct. I think that's a good, sounds really good. I, I just want to bring that up, Mary, because it's, it's important to show the public that, you know, we're taking their money and we're going to put more money to the community and it's helping us advance the, the whole initiative. I think that's good. Thank you, Eric. So we'll definitely have this on a regular item. Yeah. Oh, and just so we can uh, talk, uh, you should be have been giving a uh, the the CARES Act disbursement local governments. Did everybody get a copy of that? Yeah. Did everybody get a copy? Yes. Because if you didn't, you you uh, need one. But uh, you can see. How proud you ought to be of our staff for everything that they did uh, out of the 7.1 million that we requested. And I know Tim said they put in about 200 man hours, uh, but we received close to $4 million of that back. Um, and if you look around the county, we're about the only ones that did any work on this stuff. Uh, for example, the Downs requested a whopping $9,500 and re received $9,500 uh, with no aid to their local businesses. But in this package, our group actually did it and has what about 1.5? What did you say? 1.7? For, for the businesses, we got 1.17 uh, million. And for the local government, for the village of Rio Dosha, we got uh, 2.7, almost 2.8. So that's approximately 4 million. Council saw us, we just got this information in that last night. So um, we'll, we'll get this distributed to you as well. Yeah, I think it, it came in late yesterday afternoon. Kim called me at home, but uh, that's another example of uh, leveraging what's out there and going after those opportunities. But uh, I think that's a spectacular uh, display of dedication and paying attention to what's out there and getting it done. But we should be very, very proud, and we want to really start crowing about this this part of it. So next stage will be implementation. Exactly. Thank you, Mayor. Anyway, these guys did a great job. Item number three, discussion on adoption of resolution 2020-36, a resolution authorizing and approving submission of a completed application for financial assistance and project approval to the New Mexico Finance Authority, NMFA, for the purpose of consulting and equipping a magistrate court facility. And I know we've had some change-ups on this, uh, we've had changing personnel that we're dealing with, and so is this one, Judy? Mayor, Mayor uh, I'll, I'll start off and then you can take over, but I, on this item here, Mayor, earlier we had reported that the finance authority um, didn't have additional bonding capacity to cover this, so we're going to have to pack it with the bush seed stacks. Well, um, some of the other communities that are tied um, had it um, had it all through, so the, the finance authority does have bonding capacity and we're not so we will not have to secure we get our application in time and, and, and we proceed as we're, we're proposing uh, we won't have to back this with any uh, motion seats tax the um uh, this agreement will be sufficient to cover this and and uh, you know the payments that we have that uh, we did you know as uh, mr uh, Scott, Joe Scott, I believe his name, uh, presented to us a couple of, uh, the last month. He had presented that he was going to be letting go of the designer, um, working on some of the design himself, and then uh, in our RFP to hire a new designer. Uh, he's in that process. He, he was anticipating that he was going to delay the project about 90 days, although the Office of the Courts uh, has expressed their concerns about delays and, and whatnot. So, uh, we have a meeting first thing this morning to talk specifically about our project and making sure that it proceeds forward. So, well, for those of you that aren't paying attention, that's a big old booyah again for our staff. 
getting on me in person ready to take advantage. The other communities were not ready. And uh, so our folks were. So, I mean, we should be very grateful. And uh, so we just need to bring that one home. But that's uh, another wonderful, wonderful uh, thing. And I mean, that's proud in the age of COVID where everybody else is still trying to wind their watch and wipe their rear end. Our people are moving forward. So, Judy, do you have anything to add to that? No, this is just the resolution that authorizes us to submit the application um, to NMFA, um, and it sets forth the amount of money. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Great job. Okay, we'll put that on regular item so we can discuss that. Number four, discussion on adoption of resolution 2020. Dash 37, a resolution supporting general obligation bond issue C to benefit Eastern New Mexico University Rodoso to receive uh, 1.5 million to design, construct, renovate, and equip infrastructure at its facility in Lincoln County. We met with uh, the new president, Ryan Trosper, yesterday. Uh, I mean, it's exciting that they're carrying on the tradition and um, that. Um, of what uh, Ryan, Dr. Carson's has started. So uh, I don't know if Mr. Tross, uh, Tross met, um, he, he's going to join us next week. Oh, yeah, he's going to join us next week. Okay. Well, we met with him yesterday, but it's really awesome that they're going to be moving forward. But again, this was off the uh, vote that the local citizens passed and uh, the matching and whatnot that the overall, what is it, $156 million that the state has? Yes, sir. Yeah, 156 million uh, that's going to be spent, and so now that hopefully we'll get to spend all that. You know, some of that our share at 1.5 here in Rudolph. So we'll have that on regular item also. Any other questions or anything we need to know that someone would like to ask? Mayor, if I may. Sure. Um, council, you know, last year you know, and you know, I, I did work uh, closely with Dr. Carson Brown. On his campaign, as did many of us, you know, I know the mayor was actively involved, and I know that Susan uh, spent some time on it as well, as did uh, Chief Cooker and Chief Bedford. Um, when they were looking at putting the, the funding opportunity together, they had actually approached higher ed, and higher ed wanted to see a local commitment prior to, you know, obligating any funds or resources uh, to Rio So, so um, Brian presented the, the bond issue that was offered the property tax that passed here in Lincoln County. Uh, that generated right about 1.5 million. Uh, this 1.5 million is coming from the state general obligation bonds that are dedicated to higher ed. And that's what that 150 million is uh, for those little projects across the state for higher ed. Um, and out of that, the 1.5 million will be dedicated to. Um, the university here, and most of that is going to go to the facade work on the building. I apologize, man. I didn't, I didn't get a copy of the facade that you guys have. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the schematic of that that we can present next week. Okay. I'm really excited about that. Yes. Any other comments, questions? Okay, you'll be, you'll be joining us uh, next week. Item uh, number five, discussion on letter of financial commitment to Zia Therapy Center for fiscal year 2021-22 to prov uh, provide public transportation within the village of Rodoso in the amount of $51,986.11. And this is just a letter, and if you noted the, uh, the dates. So uh, we'll have Deputy Manager Ron Sena. Good morning, members of the council. This is just the annual letter of commitment uh, that will be submitted with the federal grant application for Zia Therapy. Uh, that will the city of Rio Downs will also be submitting a letter of commitment. Uh, it's a non-binding commitment, but uh, uh, they've been successful in uh, uh, acquiring the funding. Federal funding. They did. They did receive some CARES Act funding for this this higher fiscal year, which helped uh, uh, pay for a lot of their expenses when the village was, didn't have to pay. I believe and pretty correct me if I'm wrong, but a couple months anyway. But uh, 
they have now uh, provided uh, uh, routes. Uh, they do have the on-demand services also, and uh, this will be this is a, again another good partnership with geotherapy and the increased demand is due to the uh, <coughs> way people going out uh, in January. So I uh, just wanted any I'll stand for any questions. Hey, Ron, uh, this is uh, Tim. Uh, we had any discussion with them regarding, I see on Facebook fairly often that they're having to cancel routes um, on specific days. Uh, just that kind of last minute, I'm assuming it's a staffing issue. But if we had any discussions with them that since, uh, since we're providing subsidies, um, we'd like to have regular, regular routes uh, so that people can rely on that for the work. Mayor Crawford, uh, Councilor Coughlin, I, I was not aware of that. I will get with Anthony. They are, they do have the uh, drivers and office their house at the senior center. And I will get with Anthony. We will discuss it with Joe Barton and find out what's going on. Okay. And I'd like to keep this on regular items so we can discuss it. Uh, another example of people working through COVID, uh, what we're doing, and remind people that it's available. And then maybe Anthony or... Uh, Joe could uh, give us an answer to that or just anything they want to talk about and make it very quick. Mayor Crawford, I can have uh, the uh, staff from uh, uh, Skid Therapy make, uh, have them at the meeting for the regular meeting on the class. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Okay, item number six discussion on agreement with Systems MD. LLC through Cooperative Educational Services, CES, for managed services, computer system support. And um, is this one, who's this, Robin, or is this going to be? It's going to be. Okay, Judy. Um, this is just a renewal of the IT management services with Systems and Me. They just went through a new procurement with CES, so this is a brand new contract. One of the things that we did change in our service with them is that um, uh, a tech was coming down two days per week. In this new contract, we have determined with the, um, with the inclusion of Jeff in some of our issues and their ability to remotely uh, connect to computers, we felt that we didn't need the, uh, a tech on site as much as we had in the past. Therefore, in this contract, a tech will be traveling down once every two weeks. So that did save us some uh, money in the contract, almost 20000 per year. Okay, that's awesome. Any other questions? I think this is money well spent. We've seen a drastic improvement on the laying of fiber and whatnot. It's getting even better. And then also, Jeff Barton Ferguson has been very instrumental in taking over some of those duties, so I think it's working out very well. Uh, I think, uh, does anybody have any ideas on this consent? Yeah. Okay, consent it is. Thank you, gentlemen. Item number seven <clears throat> discussion on T Hanger Lease Agreement with Roy Butler. For lease of Alpha T, Alpha 3 T Hanger at Sierra Blanca Regional Airport. Any questions on this one? Do we uh, just put it on consent? I don't think we need to bother Joe Kasabowski with this one too much, do we? Unless there's some irregularity in it or anything Joe wants to talk about. Joe, do you have anything to add? No, Mr. Mayor and Council, there's nothing else to add. This is just a standard hanger agreement. Okay. Uh, Okay, we'll put that one on consent. Also, number eight is discussion on tea hanger lease agreement with Jason Heller for Bravo 3 tea hanger at Sierra Blanca Regional Airport. Consent? Okay. Number nine, discussion on lease agreement with Ishmael Sanchez for Aqua Environmental Testing Laboratory in the amount of $7,500. And is this one yours, Randy? Uh, yes, sir. This is just the renewal agreement for Aqua Lab with Ishmael Sanchez. And uh, everything's about the same. Okay. Mayor, Mayor uh, before uh, we move on from Randy, uh, 
Randy, can you explain the discrepancy we're going to be sending out in FYI? We had a discrepancy in, in, in addition that on one of the previous tax orders in relation to uh, the GAN project. So, Randy, can you explain that just real briefly sure. to the council? Is that, that, that with this? Uh, it's, it's not there, but it's much as we have Randy on. We okay. have discovered the discrepancy in, in adding up uh, one of the previous tax orders. So, Randy, give a brief uh, explanation so the council's not. Surprise when we see it in the FYI. Okay, this is uh, with uh, Yang Associates. It's for task order three. We went to council uh, in July and it was approved. But uh, Gresh, the project manager, contacted me and said there was a, an error of 27750 bucks, I believe. The, uh, the item was for Sarder Miller to do the uh, survey inside the gallery. The item was included, but somehow the dollar amount didn't get totaled up in the total. So the, the item was off like 27750 bucks, I believe. So uh, it was an honest mistake on their part. And he's putting a letter together explaining what happened. The, the total was off. The item was listed, but the total was off. Yeah. <coughs> we just wanted to let you know that there was a discrepancy with that sent out the FYI and that. So, I already completed the FYI and I sent that out yesterday to Eric and Karen and uh, Courtney. That's why I report that was under me. I mean, you bought the extra package or whatever is listed on the inventory, but you got that special deal. But right as you're driving it off the lot, they say, wait a minute. I don't know how that happens. I don't, I don't know if we discover uh, subtractions or uh, that's what this is, but uh, things in our favor. I don't know. This kind of stuff really rubs me like nobody's business. Honest or not. So I guess they don't make mistakes like that on their surveys. Hopefully not. Does anybody else want to kick the can down the road or does anybody else want to? Anything? Do we want to have him on to explain that? Is this something that we should have caught too, or is it just we're looking at the bottom line? Yeah. Well, I I, I, I saw the item in there, but I I didn't check their math. So. I mean, twenty-seven thousand dollars. Remind me, what is the task order total price again? Um. <laughs> Comes out to I think I don't have the exact number in front of me, but I think it's like 108,000. Okay. So what is that? 20 something percent? Is there any 30 percent off at rounding error or screw up? Pretty close. Yeah. Pretty well. That's a lot. Mm. Well, what was excuse me there? What was the next bit? Price. The next contract is price is what I would want to research. They were the only only bidder. Okay. So that's the name. Yay! There we go. Okay, well, I guess uh, we just had him talk about it. But I don't know what it's just right 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 disappointing, but I still think he should talk to us about it. I just don't understand the thirty thousand dollars. And uh, Gresh did offer anybody wanted to speak to him about it, he'd be glad to talk to anybody that you know uh, needed clarification. Oh, yes, I think it is important to have them come forward. I think we need to get a little closer to the park the next time. If you just kind of gloss over it, like you know, it's a small amount, you know, right. I think it's a lot faster. We'll make sure we have one new report for them. Okay. But if we want him to uh, be on the next. Yeah. 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 We'll have him on there, Counselor. Uh, Mayor. Yes, sir. I got a question back on uh, Israel. Yes. Um, for Randy, uh, have our utility costs gone up at plant no, three? I mean, I'm, I'm kind of thinking he's been at this 7,500 rate for. Quite some years now, and I'm just wondering if if electricity, gas, 
you they just found up. I know we're just talking about square footage and stuff, but I I just thought of that as if any of our utility costs his portion has gone up any. I don't think it's gone up dr uh, dramat dramatically. Uh, I know we did see some costs go up like in the heating, but we think that was more with the the heaters in at, at plan three. Because this is such a small footprint. It's not not a real big area. But the other thing, uh, council member uh, uh, Solace, we did increase their uh, contract a couple of years ago. We did raise it. Okay. I couldn't remember how, how long ago it was. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks, Randy. Okay, appreciate it. Item number 10. Okay, I lost it. There it is. Number 10, discussion on addendum number two with Green Tree Solid Waste Authority for recycling services through June 30th, 2021. Mr. Mayor, I have a quick question for clarification, if I may. Mm -hmm. So number nine, was it consent? No, it's a discussion. We're going to have you come on. And, aren't we? But that's, that's going to be in the manager's report. But for the item for the, for the renewal of this agreement, yeah, see yes. one another consent. That would be consent. Okay. Don't raise them out yet, but the other guy needs to go and talk about it. Yes. Okay. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. The other guy will put the yes, yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Arma. Okay, number 10, we have Jerry, is this you or Ron? Good morning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good morning. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, sir. This is just as a as a as needed basis. Uh, when that road is bad up there, I'm seeing contacting. It gets muddy or wet. Uh, we we go out and dump out there at Deborah Angles. It's a level level ground. We don't have to climb that hill in the bad weather over there at Sierra contacting. Okay, I think that's good. Does anybody else have any questions? Yeah, I do. Um, Jerry, on line three, it says on July 1st of 2020, um, in case there's a CPI increase, since we're now in September of 2020, that's like in the past, should that date be July 1st of 2021? Oh, yes, sir. Shoot any stores again, that's your detail. So, hey, I'll tell you. I uh, know you must have got a lot of stuff tonight. I didn't call it proper Councilor Coughlin. We will make that change with uh, with Bill. Get that done. Okay. All right. Very right. good. So, we'll have that one on consent. Or do you want to yeah. call? Okay, consent. Can I ask you? Sure, absolutely. Thank you. Jerry at Susan, um, I was just wondering, are you are you guys still picking up uh, discarded <clears throat> furniture alongside the dumpsters? Yes, ma'am. Okay. That the bear has closed that. That's not the gravel trucks. The right. Our right. bear man does mm -hmm. that. Right. I, I just wondered. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'm sorry that people throw things outside the dumpsters, but I was just wondering because it seems like the more we pick up, the more they throw. Oh, it, it's it's awful. Yeah. It's the illegal dumping. Yeah, I know, and I'm sorry. It, you know, we're we're down uh, experiments, people, right now, and uh, it's really hard. <laughs> it's it's awful. We need to invest in some trail and some uh, game cams in those areas where we have problems. We have the game cam to try and catch those, those people that are dropping stuff off. But yeah, yeah. it's yes, everywhere in town, though. I, I mean, I, I'm seeing it everywhere in town. And I know the guys, uh, are, they're doing a good job trying to keep up with it. Uh, just for instance, I looked outside my house the other day, and now there is a swivel chair that's all just laid out. I have no idea who dumped it. Um, 
is can I put that in the dumpster or had you rather I not do that? Actually, it's not going to hurt nothing to put it in the dumpster. Okay. It, if you can get it in there, and it's okay. Okay. Well, I've gone up and down my block saying, please don't do that. <laughs> but, you know, with all the tourists, and, and it's not just tourists, it's it's us as well. So I've, I've never seen that. That's just the first time that I've seen people put so much stuff It's in ridiculous. Well, because it's so expensive to dump it. Yes. Where I grew up, you could, it was, it was real cheap, and you had plenty of land, and flat, you know, most of these places around here like that, and they just load it up in a pickup truck or trailer and go dump it, you know. And, right. And so here, it's a different story, we have to haul it, so that's why they're doing it, it's expensive. I've taken, what color was that recliner anyway? Well, it's not a recliner, it's like an office chair, Oh. and it's off of, off of its pedestal. Um, um, so, but thank, well, I got a, thank you. I got a new puppy. I thought <clears throat> maybe I'd switch mine out for the next three months. <laughs> you know, one, of, one of the differences as well is the way that we're operating uh, the transfer station. It's not um, the operator's convenience center either. So, you know, people are picking up, you know, we're picking up the track right there at the sites. Um, the other communities I worked in, it was actually a uh, or that the general public to take those types of items to it and take them to the capture station at no cost. So, do we need to do something? Well, do we need something different? <laughs> because that's ridiculous stuff. Jerry, do you have any idea on the amount of money we spend on labor, gas, and all that effort? If we were to put a convenience center in, to see if that would, keep, you know, level of services again, that's one of our main things here is could you maybe put right, some better, attention to that? Uh, the, the deal there is, sir, uh, our, our NMED does not allow us, uh, our permit is not with uh, to let the public in at our transfer station. Okay. But uh, and that's, that's our permit. You know, that's still going to be gone for another 15 years. Yeah, we just have to have that 20. That's a permit, permit journey. There's no reason why we can't look at creating a convenience center somewhere in the community. And um, you know, doing doing something to modify that and ask for a change in oh, uh -huh. And in addition to that, you know, I think at some point we need to talk more about the operations. Um, and and uh, this is just my observation. I don't know if it's ever been studied or looked at, but even um, you know, potentially looking at contractors in the commercial areas. Um, exactly. There's there's, there's a, a tremendous amount of of lies that I've noticed this year. And you know, I don't know if I, I didn't notice that last year, but um, you know, I think we need to get some controls or some of those type of things. Those lines come from a lot of the country. Mayor Crawford, uh, members of the council, just going off of that note, you know, we also have that property there with the animal shelter with that, and he developed a small collection center there. And just for that type of material. I would like to be, I would like to do a, a roll off. I would have to get a roll off truck to pull the roll off. But we used to do that at waste management. Now, before we, we had roll off compactors. In addition to that, it would clean up some of the commercial areas oh. and, and, and whatnot as well. You know, take up less space and you know, there's a lot of damage. So I think that's one of the things you need to start looking at is the um, so I would you get time for next year, just keep those things in mind. I would appreciate it. I, it's just so disgusting to see all of the trash laid outside of the dumpsters, the beds. But, I mean, it's just anything and everything. And that's a lot more work for the guys to go oh out there and you know, haul it off and pick it up. And, you know, it's a lot of work for them. I well, I, I personally believe that um, part of it is laziness and part of it is convenience. Um, you've got a, a large piece of uh, mattress or a large piece of furniture at home that you get up. You don't have it. You don't have a pickup truck. You can't call it to the person who's just going to it. Instead, they just drive it out in the middle of the night down the next the dumpster. Now, some of it comes from people driving into the neighborhoods at night that more than likely are not from the residents just on the drive uh, and construction dumping as well. That's um, good. That's correct. So that's that's an issue. If we put a roll off somewhere, I have a feeling that we will have that thing filled up 
um, by a lot of people that don't even live within the village. Um, I see trash over there Gordon uh, that we come in Monday and there's trash that's dumped there all the time and in the dumpster. And every once in a while I get kicked off because they take three quarters away to fill up the dumpster. So I grew up in and I'll start finding um, envelopes and stuff with people's addresses and so they don't even live within the village to bring you any county company to the village. Well, there, this is John. We've got to make it easier. Uh, I think we're lucky to get into dragons to the dumpster instead of filling it in the Roy or something. So if we could have a dumpster, we could probably afford to have a man in the money you'd save off of their man as free. And when I put low offs on jobs, you know, we get the other people's garbage in. But I think that's always going to happen. But the big stuff, we got to make it easy. And see, our contract is closed on Saturday now. Yeah. yeah. So you come up here on the weekend to do a little project. You don't have anywhere to take it. Okay, so we can, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, have to make that some sort of, a, I don't know how big of a priority, but if we can start looking at that property over there, Ron, um, and I guess we've come to a conclusion on uh, that it's our property, that's our building, that's our stuff, and that the humane side is just leaving it as is. That's correct. Okay. okay. That building, that building that the main society has known for a long time was their building. Uh, uh, and that proposed the agreement uh, when I was on the board for the main society years ago, that was the agreement. We were leasing the land from the village, but the building was the property of the main society. I don't think they should be allowed to just walk off and leave that building there. Well, what if we go ahead and knock it off, clean it up, and then subtract that from our payment that we give them next year, or, let, or give them that option to let them know that's what we're going to have to do. And Mary Crawford, uh, members of the council, uh, we did turn those back, I believe that's some old uh, contracts from Bertha, and it was hard to even see exactly who owned the property for the town and the county. We'll do some more checking on that, make sure uh, on the proper ownership of that. On the proper ownership of what? On the property, the land is, the building is, but on the building, I couldn't find anything that shows who, you know, who actually owned the building or not. So mm. we'll, uh, we'll check and follow that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. When we're talking about dumping, have we, have we written any tickets? Have we caught anybody? You know, I know we put cameras up. Mr. Mayor, Council, uh, I know ACO Simpson's on the line also. He'd be able to answer that for sure, but I don't think we've issued any. We do have two game cameras that we use in that kind of operation if there's illegal dumping or something like that going on. Bobby, did you have anything? Uh, we tend to focus on education. Most folks that we run into, whether they're being truthful or not, uh, they lean on the stance that they didn't know that it was illegal, they thought it was proper to place things next to the dumpster, etc. I think that uh, good points were made in the stance that there isn't a good option for them, especially on the weekends. Uh, so we focus on education, and uh, if we have repeat offenders, then we would issue citations, but that doesn't Because I know the county, they have game cameras and <clears throat> they get your license plates the way the cameras are set up and they just send you a ticket. I don't know from personal experience, but I have a friend that got busted. <laughs> um, and it was, but I don't remember what Jerry said he's fine with, but it was substantial. So, uh, okay. So maybe we should just tell them uh, when you warn them that it's legal if they put free a free sign on it. To a good home or something, I don't know. But we'll we'll start digging into this. Okay, item number eleven. Thank you, gentlemen. Discussion on memorandum of uh, understanding between the village of Ruidoso as the fiscal agent for the Lincoln County Ruidoso DWI program and the village of Ruidoso as the administrative authority for the Ruidoso Police Department. 
for the DWI enforcement and reimbursement of costs. Chief, is that you? Uh, Mr. Mayor, Council, again, standard agreement. We've done this every year. Bill's on the line also, Mr. Hanson, uh, who is the uh, facilitator of that grant. But uh, we don't have any issue, issue with it. We'd ask that y'all would continue to support this. Okay. I don't think, uh, Mr. Hanson, did you have anything you wanted to add? Here in the council, I've, that's about it. We were late this year getting this done uh, due to some of the uncertainty about our funding. But I believe we're going to be all right with, with this amount for Rio Dosa. And I'm planning to come in next month with MOUs for the other departments. Okay. Does anyone have any questions of Mr. Hanson or Chief Booker? Okay, consent? Yeah. Yeah. consent. Okay, consent it is. <clears throat> Item number 12, discussion on second renewal agreement with Bohemia Houston, Inc. for design and engineering services for trail design and construction management for trail projects. Right, Good morning, Mayor, Councilors. Um, so, uh, as the title suggests, this is a renewal of uh, engineering and design services for NMDOT uh, related trail projects. Okay. Any questions? Okay, we'll put this one on consent. Okay, consent. And now then, we're going to need to take a, a break. We're getting ready to head into our nine o'clock uh, special meeting. And so we'll have a, a break from this, go into our special meeting, and then we will uh, be back out after the special meeting is over with. So let's call a timeout for now. Everybody hope what you got. <laughs> 